All right, how's everybody doing today? Hotep, hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. It is Saturday, February 3rd, 2024, and we are live. So this is African American History Month, and I'll be teaching, stand by. All right. All right, how's everybody doing today? It is, hold on, let me close this out. All right, hold up, everybody. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. It is Saturday, February 3rd, 2024, and we are live. So this is uh, African American History Month, and I'll be teaching a online history class, our new 10-week uh, online history class. Uh, I'll be teaching that in a few minutes as soon as we finish this broadcast. But I wanted to come on and talk about this topic here. And this is actually something that we discuss in the class. So a lot of people have heard that actor Denzel Washington is going to portray uh, Carthaginian General Hannibal Barca in a new movie uh, that's going to be on Netflix. OK, and it is directed by Anton Fuqua, okay, Anton, uh, Antoine Fuqua. Now, we remember Denzel Washington and Anton Fuqua teamed up uh, for Training Day, okay, and uh, Antoine Fuqua is an excellent director. Well, this, uh, the announcement of this uh, film on Netflix has drawn criticism be, uh, in Tunisia, which is North Africa, because you have North Africans saying that uh, Hannibal Barca, the Carthaginian general, was not black African. And we know that Denzel Washington is African-American. OK, now this also reminds us of the controversy uh, surrounding Adele James playing uh, Queen Cleopatra VII in African Queens, the series from. Uh, Jada Pinkett Smith on Netflix. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is in this article, what the controversy is, and then we're going to dispel this myth because Hannibal Barker was Black African, even though in antiquity, and you know, Hannibal um, lives in uh, 3rd century BC, and we know the Battle of Cannae is 219 BC. Uh, the Battle of uh, the, sorry, the Battle of Cannae is 216 BC when he crossed the Alps with the elephants is 219 BC and we know he's defeated at the Battle of Zama in 202 BC. Okay, however, um, he was Carthaginian and the Carthaginians were descendants of the Phoenicians. Okay, so uh, let me deal with this succinctly here and I'll give you some information about our online class. Uh, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, because uh, our online class starts today. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. All right, so Denzel Washington, and let me close out some of these ads here. Uh, Denzel Washington uh, being cast in Anton Fuqua's, Antoine Fuqua's upcoming Netflix movie as ancient Carthaginian General Hannibal, Hannibal Barca, is sparking some controversy in Tunisia, the home country of the great military commander, okay? Now, it was Carthage at the time, okay? That area was Carthage. According to French newspaper Courier International, there are complaints about, the depict, about depicting the Carthaginian general as black African. There are complaints about depicting the Carthaginian general as black African being made in the media and the Tunisian parliament and the Tunisian parliament. Now, member of parliament, Yassine uh, uh, Mami, M-A-M-I, not exactly sure how to pronounce that, has pointed out that Hannibal was born in 247 BC in Carthage, now known as Tunis, uh, the Tunisian capital, uh, and was of Asian, of West Asian Semitic origin, West Asian Semitic origin. Quote, there is a risk of falsifying history. We need to take position 
on this subject, end quote, the Tunisian political, the t Tunisian politician reportedly stated. OK, so this gets into ancient history. This gets into who was in that area at the time. This gets into uh, understanding that the Carthaginians were descendants of the Phoenicians who were black African people. And the Phoenicians are descendants of the Garamantes, a larger group of black African people there in North Africa. And the African Moors are descendants of the Garamantes as well. Concurrently, French language Tunisian newspaper, La, uh, newspaper La Presse has published an editorial in which it similarly objects that depicting Hannibal Barker as black African is, quote, according to Tunisians, according to Tunisians and many observers, historical era, a historical era. Now, keep in mind that North Africa was largely conquered by Arabs. The Arabs invade Egypt in 639 A.D., conquer in 642 A.D. or common era. OK, and go throughout North Africa. All right. Yes, you do have some uh, black Africans, descendants of those uh, ancient Africans that are still there, but they um, they're in the minority. And we know in Egypt, they've been pushed further south, uh, especially into uh, Sudan, which in ancient times was Nubia. OK, or Ta-Nehisi. However, Tunisian culture minister Hayat Katat uh, Gramazi had a different, more pragmatic take on the matter. Uh, he said, uh, he told the French newspaper Le Monde, Le Monde, uh, it's fiction, it's their Netflix, uh, right, it's their right to do what they want, referring to Netflix. She said, uh, Hannibal is a historical figure, and we are all proud that he was Tunisian, but what can we do? She went on to note that she is trying to negotiate with Netflix to shoot at least a portion of the film in Tunisia. Uh, quote, I hope they decide to shoot at least a sequence of the film here and that, and that, that this is publicized. We want Tunisia to go back to being a location where foreign, fi foreign films are shot. Um, she said, as reported by Le Monde newspaper. OK, now representatives for Netflix, uh, Denzel Washington and Anton, Antoine Fuqua did not immediately reply to a request for comment. Now, this controversy in Tunisia over Denzel Washington playing Hannibal is reminiscent, as I said at the beginning of the uproar, uproar in Egypt. And let's be frank, anti-black backlash from Arabs in Egypt over um, uh, Adele James portraying uh, Queen Cleopatra VII. And they weren't saying Queen Cleopatra VII was black. They were saying that she was not white. They were saying she looked more like Adele James, who is biracial, than she did Cleopatra. I mean, then, then she did Elizabeth Taylor, who portrayed Cleopatra VII as well, okay? Now, the still untitled film about the Carthaginian general Hannibal Barker will be written by John Logan, the three-time Academy Award winner who scribed Martin Corsese's The Aviator and Ridley Scott's uh, Gladiator. According to the original logline, the movie is based on real-life warrior Hannibal Barker, uh, who became a uh, Carthaginian Carthaginian general at 26 years old. He is widely regarded as one of the one of the greatest military commanders in history. The film covers the pivotal battles he led against the Roman Republic during the Second Punic War. And we deal with the Punic Wars in my online class, um, online history class also. And we also talk about the Battle of Cana 216 BC, when Hannibal has an army of 50,000 uh, people made up of uh, largely of barbarians who defeat the Roman army. And Rome has about 80,000 uh, uh, soldiers, okay? That's the Battle of Cannae, 216 BC. Hannibal invaded Italy while riding a Northern African war elephant, okay? And you read about Hannibal crossing the Alps, that's in 219 BC. Under his lead, the Carthaginians won key victories against the Romans, allowing Hannibal to occupy the majority of Southern Italy uh, for 15 years. 
Eventually, Hannibal was defeated by the Romans at the Battle, battle of Zama, Z-A-M-A, -A, after they counter-invaded North Africa, okay? Um, and that's the Battle of Zama in 202 BC. It's going to be after the Battle of Zama that Publius Cornelius Scipio uh, takes the surname Africanus after the area that he's conquered, okay? Africa was not named after a Roman general, okay? Africanus means belonging to Africa. People have this totally backwards, and we break this down in my class and provide you with the evidence as well. So what I want to do quickly here is I, I want to um, look at some information that I teach on dealing with um, Hannibal Barca, okay? And uh, these are actual uh, slides uh, from my class, but we, we deal with this myth and we deal with um, distortions of Hannibal's depiction. And we show that Hannibal was a uh, black African. Okay. Now there's a, uh, there was a series also from the history channel called barbarians rising came out about 2015. And in that series, it depicted um, Hannibal Barker as a uh, black African also. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let me go to, uh, I want to, oh, all right, yeah, I want to take that down. Also, I meant to show you all my T-shirt. I know some people are asking, okay, uh, black, uh, blacks in science, black scientists and invent inventors, okay? So, you know, I always have some interesting T-shirts. All right, so let, let's look at this here. All right, now. Carthage was founded in 813 BCE before the Common Era. Uh, a Carthage exists from 813 BCE to 146 BCE or BC. And uh, Carthage is destroyed by the Romans. OK, so when you read the uh, you read about the Punic Wars, uh, that deals with the wars between Carthage and Rome. Now, in uh, let's see, here, let's back up for a minute. OK. Now, Carthage was founded in the 9th century BCE on the Gulf of Tunis. From the 6th century onwards, it developed into a great trading empire covering much of the Mediterranean and was home to a brilliant civilization, was home to a brilliant civilization. In the uh, course of the Long Punic Wars, Carthage occupied some of Rome's territories before finally being destroyed by its rival in 146 BCE. If you watch the uh, fantastic documentary about Dr. John Henrik Clark, a great grandmaster scholar warrior, uh, Dr. John Henrik Clark, um, he talks about uh, Hannibal Barca. He talks about the uh, the Romans, OK, the, uh, the Carthaginians as well. OK. Um, all right, here, hold on just a second. He talks about the Carthaginians as well and the the effort by uh, Rome uh, to destroy the Carthaginians. Okay, uh, let's continue here. All right, now in his book, um, great in his book, World, World's Great Men of Color, Volume 1, History scholar uh, Joel Augustus Rogers, J.A. Rogers, asserts the Carthaginians were descendants of the Phoenicians, a Negroid people, and that, in fact, until the rise of the doctrine of white superiority, Hannibal Barker was traditionally known as a black man. Until the rise of white supremacy and white superiority that we see taking place as the uh, as Europe is moving out of the Dark Ages, going into the Renaissance era. So uh, the 1300s, 1400s, and then we see exploration in the 1400s. As they're moving out of the Dark Ages into the Renaissance era, and it's going to be the teachings from the African Moors that bring Europe out of the Dark Ages, the teachings coming from the Nile Valley region of Africa that the African Moors take into Europe beginning in 711 A.D., we're going to see as Europe becomes powerful, starts conquering people's lands, uh, enslaving people, extracting mineral wealth, gold and silver from people's lands, setting up uh, uh, plantations, sugarcane plantations, especially. 
we're going to see a rise in the European phenotype and we're going to see a reinterpretation of historical or mythological figures that were depicted historically as African. OK, so Michelangelo paints the Sistine Chapel and uses his aunt and uncle as the images of Adam and Eve and paints God as white. We see Hannibal Barker reinterpreted as European. We see Zeus, who was the king of the gods. And in the mythology uh, in Greek mythology it tells you Zeus came from Ethiopia. These were black Africans, but Zeus gets reinterpreted as European. OK, we see uh, Hercules who was black, okay, coming from Greek mythology, Hercules reinterpreted as European. We see the black Madonna and child, okay, who comes from uh, Osset, okay, Isis. We see her get reinterpreted as European, okay? So as we have a rise in the dominance of uh, the European phenotype and, and as Europeans come into power, as Europe moves from the dark ages, into the renaissance era we see a rise in the european phenotype and we're still suffering from the side effects of that rise of the european phenotype today this is why as african people african people around the world including african americans we have to take our minds back we have to take our minds back and black history month can serve as the catalyst for that process of taking our minds back black history month created by uh, in 1926 by Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who co-founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, September 9th, 1915 in Chicago, Illinois. Now, today, many encyclopedias classify the Carthaginians as whites or Semites. OK, today, many encyclopedias classify the Carthaginians as whites or Semites. Um, but ancient Greek and Roman eyewitness accounts paint a different picture. The indigenous people of Carthage were called the Aphirs. The indigenous people of Carthage were called the Aphirs, A-F-E-R-S. Ancient Roman poet Virgil in his poem Mortum, M-O-R-E-T-U-M, speaks of a woman from the Aphir or a or Afar, A-F-A-R, also known as the Afra race, A-F-R-A, he says of this woman, Virgil says of this woman, and all her figure proves her native land. Her hair was, her hair was curly, thick her lips, and dark her color, okay, and all and all her figure proves her native land. Her hair was curly, thick her lips, and dark her color. Now, in Library of History Book 20, XX, Roman numeral 20, XX, Greek historian Diodorus mentions a Greek lieutenant named Agathocles, Agathocles, who defeated a people in the area of present-day Tunisia who were the same hue as Ethiopians. Now, are you talking about white Ethiopians? No, they're talking about black African people, okay? This is how when Europeans come out of the dark ages, they reinterpret history through a European cultural paradigm. And that's putting it politely because a, a lot of the stuff they just lied about, okay? Still in people's lands and then lying about who was there. But colonizing, uh, you know, Dr. John Henry Clark talks about how, um, you know, Europeans colonize history, Europeans colonize imagery, but also they colonize the image of God. And when you study, when the Moors go in in 711 AD, um, the Black Madonna and Child, the, fig, the statues, the figure, the worship of the Black Madonna and Child is all throughout Europe. The, the, the European country, according to according to Renoko Rashidi in the book in the book uh, Black Star, the African Presence in Early Europe, uh, the uh, this book right here, and we use this is one of the books we use in the class. France probably has the most depictions of the Black Madonna and Child uh, with approximately 300. OK, 
France has uh, approximately 300. That's page 51 uh, of um, Black Star, the African presence in early Europe. And if we look here quickly, you see on page pages 90 and 91, you see depictions, statues, paintings of the Black Madonna and Child that are still in Europe today. Okay? But they've got us worshiping Europeans when Europeans used to worship African people. i be damned. Now, see, this is the type of information that needs to be incorporated into every Black History Month celebration, especially in the churches, especially in the churches. This is probably why I don't get asked to speak in a lot of Black History Month celebrations, because I I don't I don't do uh, okie doke uh, slave Black History Month celebration uh, speeches. And, and I don't uh, teach um, history to make white people feel comfortable with the oppression of African people. I don't, I don't do that. Now, I don't I don't teach it with the intent of making white people feel guilty either. I just deal with the history. But we don't we we, we don't do we don't do uh, no uh, Negro. We shall overcome a uh, black history. Month celebrations. That's disrespectful to Dr. Carter G. Woodson and the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. We don't we don't do stuff like that. OK. All right. Now. OK, let's continue because uh, I got to teach this class. Now, if you like this type of information, how's everybody doing? I'm Michael M. Hotel, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. Um, you see me on Roller Martin Unfiltered every Friday. You see some of my broadcasts. You see my reels on Instagram and all that. OK, uh, we have uh, the introduction to our class starting up here in a few minutes at my online school. You can register for that. Uh, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com africanhistorynetwork.com uh, and we also have the information right here in the thread of the broadcast ancient kemet the moors and the ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade what they didn't teach you in school okay this is a uh, new 10-week uh, online history course that i teach we're going to do an introduction today as soon as i finish here and we deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to uh, the transatlantic slave trade taking place okay and uh this is over 200 slides that i put together uh, we have uh, 80 to 100 articles that we reference. Uh, we have uh, excerpts of interviews that I've done with uh, many of our scholars over the years also that hits on different aspects uh, of this history. OK, we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. OK, and just at our website, just click your register here in the class. I'll go over the uh, lesson plan because I have a lesson plan laid out for all 10 classes and. Uh, we'll send you the lesson plan in the, uh, so you can download it also. I'm trying to get the link straight on the website so you can actually look at the lesson plan there. But this is my life's work. Uh, I started teaching this class in 2007. It's taken seven years to get the class, really develop it to where it is today. 80 to 100 articles, 15 books that we reference. Uh, you don't have to buy any, any of these books to follow follow along in class. Class is on sale, eighty dollars, regular one hundred thirty dollars, and we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded, so even after the course is over, if you can go back and watch the entire course, okay, so you don't lose access to it. I don't want to. I don't want um, you know to do that. I want you to be able to two three years from now be able to still access this class, and this is at our online school, okay. All right, now um, let's continue here. The eyewitness accounts uh, are corroborated by eyewitness accounts of um, the uh, Ethiopians uh, of uh, uh, Tunisians having the same hue complexion as Ethiopians, black Africans. The eyewitness accounts are corroborated by physical anthropology. L. Berthelon and E. Chantre both well-noted French anthropologists documented their examination of skeletons throughout North Africa in all periods. They noted that the remains of both upper and lower class individuals of ancient North Africa were representative of the Negroid race. They're saying these were black Africans. OK, these, these weren't these these weren't light. These weren't brown Caucasians. OK, these weren't light skin uh arabs these weren't dark skinned europeans these were black african people and there's a there's a huge effort and a continuing effort to distort this history so you can reduce african people to just slavery and being conquered 
they don't want to show and even in in media in the movies they do not want to show african people ruling the world why because whatever is disseminated becomes imitated that's why Megan Thee Stallion is promoted to us. That's why Lil Wayne is promoted to us. That's why Sexy Red is promoted to us. That's why ignorance is promoted to us. Whatever is disseminated becomes imitated, okay? So we have to understand this. Bantu Stephen Biko, one of our great South African freedom fighters, said the most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. We must take our minds back. All right, now, uh, okay, let's continue here. How y'all like this type of information? Give us a thumbs up. Give us a heart. Give us a like on this broadcast. Now, here is an ancient coin front and back thought to depict Hannibal Barker of Carthage. Okay. And this comes from an article and some of this information comes from an article from AtlantaBlackStar.com, June 26, 2014, five ancient African empires besides Egypt. Egypt that Europeans and Arabs tried to claim as their own five ancient African empires besides Egypt that Europeans and Arabs tried to claim as their own. OK, now, so the fight continues. We go from Denzel Washington going to portray Hannibal Barker, the Carthaginian general, in a new uh, movie on Netflix from uh, uh, director Anton Fuqua. OK, Antoine Fuqua. We, we go from that to backlash from uh tunisia and if we go back to 2023 we see uh in this article is from december 11 2023 denzel washington's casting as ancient general hannibal and antoine fuqua netflix film sparks controversy in tunisia in north africa we saw jada pinkett smith got backlash okay not for will slapping uh chris rock but backlash for depicting uh uh, putting forth the notion, one, that Queen Cleopatra VII was uh, biracial or mixed race, which most likely she was, okay? And she looked more like Adele James, most likely, and, and Adele James is biracial. She looked more like Adele James than she did uh, Elizabeth Taylor, okay? And we, we've done extensive broadcasts dealing with um, the series from Jada Pinkett Smith here on the African History Network. OK, so check out the interview I did with Dr. Malefic Ketia Asante, uh, uh, Anthony Browder, as well as the interview that I did with Dr. Charles Finch. OK. All right. Now, this is um, uh, Pinnock, uh, Nicholas Pinnock. OK. And in 2016, I think it was um, the History Channel had a series called Barbarians Rising, Barbarians Rising. And it dealt with 700 years of invasions, okay, of the Roman Empire and it leads up to the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 AD, Common Era, okay, when the Western portion of the Roman Empire is conquered by the Vandals and the Visigoths, all right? Now, um, um, hold on, uh, conquered by the Vandals and the Visigoths, okay? So the first installment dealt with Hannibal Barker. And they talk about the Battle of Canine, 216 B.C. And black British actor, uh, uh, black British actor Nicholas Pinnock portrayed Hannibal Barker. OK, and he did an excellent job and uh, he looked more like Hannibal Barker than whatever white actor or Arab looking actor they're going to get because Hannibal was black African. OK. The famous Carthaginian was a thorn in the empire side. He became a general at the age of 26 and managed to unite barbarian tribes to stop Rome's imperial rise. The military genius was famous for climbing the Alps with war elephants whose sole purpose was to stop the Roman Empire, whose sole purpose was to stop the Roman Empire. Hannibal ultimately wanted to invade Rome, but he failed to do so. There have been debates over the race of Hannibal, this debate still continues to this day. So there was a good article from AtlantaBlackStar.com called History Channel Portrays Hannibal as Black. White people cry foul over, quote unquote, historical revisionism. This article is from June 7th, 2016. OK. And um, in 219 B.C., Hannibal of Carthage led an attack on uh, Saguntum, uh, an independent uh, city allied with. Rome, which sparked the outbreak of the Second Punic War. 
Okay, he, uh, Hannibal then marched his massive army across the Pyrenees and Alps into central Italy in what would be remembered as one of the most famous campaigns in history. After a string of victories, the most notable coming at Cannae in 216 BC, this is he, the, the, the Roman army loses about 50,000 soldiers at the Battle of Cannae in 216 BC. It's looked at as, as one of the greatest military victories in history. So there's a there's a concerted effort, right? To see, see they don't have a problem. Uh, white Hollywood, the the white power structure. They don't have a they don't have a problem with uh, trying to rewrite the history of black buffoonery. And um, have Europeans uh, depicted in roles that originally went to black buffoons. They, they don't have a problem with that. Step and fetch it. Amos and Andy. Even though Amos and Andy, when it was a radio show, was created by two Jewish men, uh, Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll, two white men, Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll. They oftentimes perform the radio show in blackface. But then when it goes to television, then they had to have African-American actors. So if, if, if you ever heard of the Amos and Andy radio show that started in the 1920s that comes from the minstrel shows, the minstrel shows were created by T.D. Rice, Thomas Dartmouth Rice, about 1828, 1829, who's known as the father of minstrelsy. OK, and is OK. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to slow down because I got to teach this class and, and see all this. We get into all this. This is, a, this is a 10 week online course. But let me just show you something here. Let me just show you this right quick. Uh, this is T.D. Rice. So this is why the minstrel shows were so damaging, because it created the uh, stereotypes of the coon and the mammy uh, 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 and Jim Crow. OK, coming from the song, turn around, jump around, I jump just so every time I turn around, I jump Jim Crow. Right. Uh, if we look here at this slide here, this is T.D. Rice, Thomas Dartmouth Rice and a sketch uh portraying the Jim Crow character that he created. He was known as a, a, a Ethiopian delineator and he performed uh, in tattered torn clothing, put on blackface, uh, developed the Southern dialect to imitate African slaves. And he performed this on stage. It became so popular that other white men did the same thing. And then they started creating minstrel show, um, they, they, they created minstrel show companies and they toured throughout the US and toured throughout Europe projecting these negative stereotypical images of African people during slavery, but then also after slavery. Okay. And one of the most diabolical, one of the most destructive movies in history was the movie, the birth of a nation that debuted February 8th, 1915. And all the negative stereotypical images of African people was shown in this movie, the birth of a nation. Okay. And most of the images of African Americans were uh, white people in blackface. So this is why uh, you see me go after negative images of African people in the media today. Because I understand this history. I've been studying history 33 years. I'm a historian. I know the weaponization of imagery and media. This is not entertainment. This is programming. This is not entertainment. This is programming. Race riots broke out in the street. Because of the movie, The Birth of the Nation, the, the Ku Klux Klan was rejuvenated because of the movie, The Birth of a Nation, because the Ku Klux Klan were the heroes of the movie. The, OK, long story short, the movie takes place between during sla during slavery in Piedmont, South Carolina, during slavery. Uh, the Civil War, 1861, 1865 and the Jim Crow and the, the Reconstruction era, 1865, 1877. You can watch the entire three hour movie on YouTube. It's, it's a silent movie. There's a scene that depicts a black man raping a white virgin in the movie, The Birth of a Nation. This movie calls race riots in the streets. And the, what's interesting is we had enough sense to protest against that movie, lead protest in Boston, lead protest in California when the movie came out. Today, we don't have enough sense to protest negative corporate controlled hip hop. That puts forth some of the same negative, stereotypical, dehumanizing images. We had more sense back then. OK, uh, let's see here. How's everybody doing? All right. So 
let me wrap it up. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. How do you like this type of information? Give us a thumbs up. Give us a heart. Give us a like on this broadcast. Uh, visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. You can, uh, as I Gary, jump off and go to our online school and teach this class. But uh, visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. You can register for uh, this 12-week online history class that I teach, Ancient Kemet, one of the original names for Egypt, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school, okay? And uh, before uh, I go, I, I got to show you this quickly. So, because I hear so, so many people putting out this misinformation, saying that Africa is named after a Roman general, Publius Cornelius uh, Scipio Africanus. Um that's false. It's the other way around. It's the other way around. Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus fought in the uh, Second Punic War. He dies in 183 BC, okay, which is uh, also the uh, same year that uh, Hannibal Barker dies, all right? Now, uh, I consulted Cassell's Latin English Dictionary. I was doing a presentation for African Liberation Day here in Detroit back around 2012, 2013, something like that. And this was one of my topics. Africa was not named after a Roman general named Publius Cornelius Scipio, okay? Cassell's Latin English Dictionary, 2002 edition, page 11, the entry for a fear, it tells you that uh, Africa, uh, it tells you that the word Africanus uh, means African or belonging to Africa, belonging to Africa as a surname conferred upon two of the Scipios. Um, okay, now, so his last name was Scipio. Is after the battle, battle of Zama in 202 BC that he takes the surname Africanus, mean belonging to Africa. The prefix Afri is in reference to a people called the Afri who lived in Algeria and Tunisia, a black African people. So we reference pages 14 and 15 of African people in world history by Dr. John Henrik Clark. And it says uh, here, the Nile Valley's first age of high cultural grandeur lasted until the eve of the Christian era. Some aspects of it survived the Greek and Roman occupation of parts of North Africa. After this rise and decline of Greek civilization and the Roman destruction of the city of Carthage, Rome and Carthage is destroyed, destroyed in 183 BC, the Romans organized the, con the conquered territories into a province they called Africa. Okay. After the Romans, uh, after the rise and decline of Greek civilization, and the Roman destruction of the city of Carthage. The Romans organized the conquered territories into a province they called Africa. A word derived from Afri, A-F-R-I, the name of a group of people about whom little is known. This was a new name because previously all dark-skinned people were called Ethiopians since the Greeks referred to Africa as Ethiopia, which in Ethiopia means l the land of the burnt faced people. Okay, so Ethiopia originally was Abyssinia. Okay, so Ethiopia is a Greek word, all right? So, uh, but the Afri were a group of black African people in Algeria and Tunisia. Tunisia used to be called Carthage. The Carthaginians are descendants of the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians are descendants of a larger group of people called the Garamantes, who also the African Moors were descendants of as well. OK, so no, Africa was not named after Publius Cornelius Scipio. It's just the other way around. He took his surname Africanus after uh, he de uh, defeats uh, uh Carthage in uh, the Battle of Zama defeats Hannibal Barker, uh, 202 BC in the in the uh, Battle of Zama, Z A M A. And if you read the article from um, History.com called Hannibal, in that article it tells you that it took he took his surname after the Battle of Zama. So can we please 
okay stop this simple simon nonsense just putting forth bs with no research haven't done any research on it just just throwing out nonsense okay all right also if you like this type of information you can uh support the african history network dollar sign the ahn show through cash app dollar sign the ahn show through cash app also through paypal paypal.me forward slash the ahn show so uh go to our website uh, africanhistorynetwork.com scroll down and we have the information here for the um cash app paypal and when you click on that this is our official cash app account dollar sign the ahn show s-h-o-w when you go to it it says michael these other ones are fake african history network cash app accounts i'm still trying to get shut down because people have been stealing money from us okay uh these are not uh, ours they're, they're using our logo all that stuff i put the link here you click on the link and it has our qr code here as well okay all right so look i have to get out of here uh we have the link for the class here in the thread of the broadcast also uh register for the uh full class that helps us keep doing the research stay on the air keep broadcasting if you want me to do a presentation for your group or organization uh please uh email me through the website or email me at uh ahn show at the african history network.com ahn show at the african history network.com uh, and uh we can set that up either in person or virtually uh, if you want me to do a presentation for your group or organization listen to the african history network show sundays 9 p.m 11 p.m eastern standard time right here on our social media platforms visit our website for more information about that and watch me on fridays on roland martin unfiltered as well on the black star network on facebook youtube uh, roland martin facebook youtube download the black star uh network app okay remember right now it's correct wrong behavior is not over till we win wakanda forever and we'll